Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about national titles, in this case, 15. So really impressive what we'll get to talk about today. We are joined by Carol Lloyd. She is the University of Memphis Spirit Coordinator and Head Dance Coach for Memphis Palm. How are you doing, Carol? I'm doing well, doing well, just gearing up for the new season to start up. So doing good. Well, hey, you are always on go, so that is part of this, but let's start with a little bit of your backstory because you yourself, student athlete, national championships and titles, and then obviously stepping in and being a coach, once again, national championships and titles, so give us a little bit of your backstory. Well, um, first of all, thank you for having me. This is, um, I I really appreciate it. Um, I'm honored to be able to share our story, what we're about. Um, So I always was a cheerleader growing up and I took dance on the side, but I was highly competitive with cheerleading and with track. And when it came time for college, I was like, okay, I'm just going to try out for Memphis because they're, you know, the best pretty much at that time. I was like, they're the only team to dance for and it's local. And so as soon as I tried out, I just, dove in head first as far as the competitive level and nature of it then. Um, I mean, it still is, but, you know, 30 years ago, it was, that was all there was really. And I, I just dove in and loved every, every aspect of it from the practice to being at games, being out in the community, competing, obviously competing. Um, so that just made me want to be more, um, always a part of it. I just kind of got into coaching in general around the city. Once I turned 18 and when I was on the team, I was coaching. So as soon as I graduated, I still showed up to the practices and um, Sherry Ganong at the time, you know, was the coach and she was my coach and she and I were very close and she was such a mentor and just a leader and just someone that was basically like a second mom to me, we just became really close. And so I just tagged along on everything and went to all the practices, went to the competitions with them, um, you know, helped her as needed. If she needed it, I was never like an assistant coach or anything like that um, because she by far had it under control. (laughs) And then when she retired, um, I was already coaching the cheer teams. I had just taken them over the year before And so when she retired that next year and I just added dance to it, it just made things come full circle for me because I, you know, had been an athlete, was bleed tiger blue. That's all I know. And then taking the program to the next step. And the main thing is really just continuing what she developed, you know, what she started from the ground and what um, the legacy was. I wanted to make sure that I could do the same thing. And so now I have more titles from being an athlete, but then now being a coach, which means so much to me, but net and, and a lot of coaches say, you know, like, I don't know, like me as a coach, I like the, the titles are great, but I like them more for the athletes. They need to, when they can experience something like that, that to me as a coach is so rewarding because I don't need the titles. I don't, I don't need that. Um, you know, to make me feel like I've done my, my job. Um, I want them to feel that and have that experience of just being part of such a legacy. I mean, it's, I mean, we're known everywhere nationally and all around the world. So um, it's just an honor to be able to still say that I'm coached 20 years later. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) For those who aren't familiar with the sport, give us an idea of what it entails. So the number of athletes, kind of the season, a typical day in the life of, give us some of the, you know, the basics of the sport, if you will. Okay. So we, like I said, we're gearing up for tryouts now. Um, Our season is pretty much all all year. Um, Of course, it's a little slower right now, but we'll have auditions. And then we usually pick on the dance team anywhere between 22 to 28 members. It really just depends. There's not a certain number. Um, really just goes off of, you know, what we're needing for that year um, and through throughout the season for the different things that we do, because we're at so many different events. So really the more members that you have, the easier it is to divide everyone um, and make sure we're 
we're in attendance where we need to be. Um, they, we, we do a, um, a fundraiser in the summer and we go to camp, but they're kind of have their summers off really. And then we start full force in August and we practice um, an average three to four days a week um, game, you know, and we also have extra classes outside of practice. They take ballet, they do workouts, they have, um, they have runs that they have to do, um, you know, on top of games, you know, game football game days are eight hour days. So they do that. And, um, and then when we, we have choreography weekends to get us ready for, uh, for game days and for competition, um, you know, our main focus as being, um, you know, spirit members are game days and we represent the university first. Um, competition is just a very, very small part of what we do all season. Um, we're training all year for it, but the main thing is game day because that is what, well, I mean, we're the face of the university. We have to be, you know, we have to up our game every year to make sure that we are setting that, having that expectation and setting that standard. So we work all year for that. And then we, um, there's not a lot of time off. Um, <laughs> they get some time at Thanksgiving, you know, a couple days maybe. And uh, same thing at Christmas. And then we compete at our national competition in mid-January. And then in the spring, we um, are just full force basketball. So, and then we go to the conference tournaments and then any post, um, you know, postseason play, we go to the tournaments during the season. Also, if the teams play away, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, but it's all year. And so, of course, it's now just backing up and butts right up to tryouts again. So, you know, we have the spring game this weekend, but then we have tryouts in two weeks. So it's just like this. Yep. They, they always any, on go. You know, they, they have no, they don't have any time. Yeah, they don't have any time. But, you know, that's part of it. And that's, that's what they that's part of being a collegiate athlete, especially a collegiate um, dancer or cheerleader. And it's a great experience for what life is like. I mean, that's when yes. you talk about becoming a professional, that's exactly a, a big piece of that. The, the confidence, the discipline, yep. all of that goes in. Talk about Memphis Palm Dream Team. Well, so um, the, the letters that usually, that dance teams usually use like for their, is the DT always stands for dance team. So most people think that it's Memphis Palm dance team. Well, back in 2011, we started calling it MPDT for Dream Team. And it's just stuck with it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's not many people know that. We just know that. But we just do that because we feel that, you know, we're authentic um, and we're very diverse. And we just really capitalize on that. Like, we just really feel that being unique and we're the dream team. We just, every year is the dream team. It's not just one year. It's not just a year that you win. It's because I feel like there's wins every year without winning a national champion. Cause we still continue to be one of the top programs in the United States. So that is one of the things that's sometimes hard to get across to the young athletes that, Hey, you know, even though you don't win, you're, you're still one of the top sought out teams in the nation. And, you know, at our level, you know, it, it's it's hard to maintain so um that's one reason why we call it dream team you know it's special what have been some of your kind of aha moments as a coach so transitioning from the the student athlete to being a coach little different level of responsibility obviously and you're tasked with you know grooming and and helping to mature and life lessons and all of these yes. things so you know what have been some of the ways that you've kind of changed and morphed your approach to working with student athletes well that's that's interesting um so when you said that about the different roles it's not just a coaching role it is um you know you have to be their friend you have to be their parent you have to be their counselor you have to be you know you have to guide them in so many different directions because so many of them come from out of town and so we become their new family. And that's what we really um, push in our program with cheer and with Palm. We are one big family. And we stress that um, because we're your new family. And they need to understand that they, they need to know that I'm here for them in different, in all these different ways outside of just dance. But when it comes to being an athlete, you know, when I first started coaching, 
you know, I wanted to be just like, I wanted to coach just like Sherry. And I wanted to be, you know, and a lot of young coaches do that. They want to be like their coach was and feel like they need to do that to get, to get what they want or their point across. And early on though, I, I found what I stood for and what I wanted in a product and what, what kind of results I wanted. And I've never strayed from that. Um, you know, times have changed because the kids have changed. Um, you know, their, so their priorities are different. It's, you know, I coach from the middle school level all the way to the college. And I always tell even the middle school parents that I'm going to expect the same thing out of them that I do the college students. They're going to be respectful. They're going to be dependent. They're going to be on time. They're going to be resilient. They're not going to be late to a job when they come out of this. <laughs> They're going to be respectful to their employers. They're going to learn how to be a friend. That's another thing. You know, you come from all these different walks of life and you have to learn how to be a team, a teammate and a good teammate. And you have to learn how to take criticism and you got to um, understand that my tough love, um, which people say is really because I want you to be the best. And that's, that's all coaches want is for that individual to be their best. And if we can see that in them, we're going to try to pull it out of them the best way that we can. And, and over the years, you realize as a coach that, you know, not everyone can be coached exactly the same, but still, I'm not going to go hold her hand, you know, and, and talk to her a different way than someone else or pull them aside. But there is different ways to get it across to everyone. But also, though, you know, when you're working with the dream team, <laughs> you've got the talent that's just there. And so, you know, it's, I found myself, oh, I'm very blessed to be able to do what I do, but to be able to work with athletes of that kind, with that kind of talent and, ex and experience is just, it's crazy because you can do such great things with them and they, you can relate to them a little bit more and you have fun a little bit more. Um, you know, it's very taxing and it's, it's very hard. That's very tedious, but, um, you know, that's part of it. It's, that's part of being a, on a college dance team and being a college coach. You know, you can't let it slide. You know, I've done it a long time, so I've got to stay up on it. And they keep me young, but also they keep me um, on my toes as far as pushing them even farther and, you know, just finding new ways to do things and, and include them a little bit more. I think um, that, you know, sometimes people can exclude the actual team from the process and think that their way is the only way it's going to get done. But I found, you know, including the members and in on any ideas that I have, um, feedback, anything like that, and including making them feel really part of the process as much as you're invested, then that you're one big happy family. You're going to get so much more done if you feel like you are, um, you're not invested more than they are and vice versa. You know, they, you know, there's days that it's really hard to kind of, you know, be in the moment because we have so many things going on in our lives. But when you're around athletes like that, again, they just draw you back in and they make you want to be better as a coach. And I make, and I make them want to be better as an athlete and as a team overall. Yeah. I, I like that dynamic of, them pushing you, you pushing them, but giving them ownership in those conversations yes. so that they feel like they're included and they're part of it and they have a voice and you're actively listening. I love that dynamic. I'm curious for you because I think there is a cool storyline of you stepping in, you know, under, as you mentioned, Sherry, very successful. And then all of a sudden you stepping in, but carving your own path and being true to yourself. So two part question one is what's something that you, you know, even to this day kind of have taken from the experience with Sherry as your coach. And so what's something that you still use to this day, but also what's something that's different that you've carved your own path on? You know, sometimes I find myself doing some of the same antics that Sherry did. And it's crazy. I realize it. And it's just small things like it is. It could be something that I say or it can be the way that I stand. And I think to myself. Sherry used to do this. Like, I remember this. And it's crazy how you pick up on those traits. And I think in early on, I, I was a lot, um, you know, I didn't really see the, the athlete's point of view a lot, I guess I could say. 
not that I was like discrediting who they were or their opinion or value or did, I didn't not I did not value them but I felt like how I was saying is no you know I'm going to do this I'm going to do this I'm going to do this because the way that we were on the team with Sherry I mean it was it was strict and we always like I mean, we always had our opinion and we always, it was a group effort a lot of times with a lot of tons of the stuff that we did. She was very open to that. But I think sometimes you, you look back and you're like, okay, there's, we've got to open up the door and figure out a new way to do this, to get things done and not be as strict. I don't have to be as strict. Um, I, I feel like I still am but in a different way, because I really do open up that other door of listening to them on personal issues that they have, personal things that they're going through. And so that it doesn't, it's not, I'm not saying that it softens me, but it does make me realize, you know, Carol, there is more to, you know, get, getting this eight count done right now. And there's, there's things going on. And, and, you know, me personally, you know, as coaches, we go through things too. And I think I've realized, okay, I just need to step back. I need to take it day by day. Um, I can't be too on edge. Um, and those are things that I've learned as a coach through the years. And, and I tell them, I'm like, look, if I'm having a bad day, you need to look at me one day and be like, okay, what's up? What's going on with you? You know, you normally are not like this. You're very chippy. You're this, you're on edge, you know, because I have a lot of pressure on me. Um, and I used to feel like the pressure was to win. We have to win again. Um, whether it's from the community, from my co you know, other coaches, whether it's from the athletes, whether it's from the university, I've never been told that, but as a high profile coach, you, it's just like with any sport, you feel like the wins are what defines you. And I think early on, that's kind of how it was, even though I knew it's like, I, I know it's not like that, but I feel like that's what everybody wants from us. And now, um, you know, I think that our success still, still happens without, without the wins and without the first place trophies, everybody wants a first place trophy. But to me, um, what we were talking about as far as going out into life and making life decisions and, you know, it's so rewarding, you know, for our seniors to be getting these internships. And, you know, one of our seniors is moving to California to, to work on something. Another one's going to Washington for, um, for grad school, just different things that they, you see them really um, excelling for their career and what they want to do. It's like, I'm sad for them to go, but me as a coach, this is what I'm preparing them for anyway. This is just a little blip that's going to set them up for that. So I have been more open to that. And, you know, I'm, it's sad <laughs> sometimes, but, um, you know, that's what we're here for. We got to groom them and get them the right way. And then along the way, just make them the best dancers and athletes that, that they can be, you know, get them to that platform to where they have reached their potential. And then now they can go out into the world and do more whether it's dance professionally or go into another profession, you know, cause we have a lot of girls that are, that have gone on to dance for the NBA, NFL, different things. So, you know, it's, if you can dance, do it as long as you can, if you can get paid for it, that's even better on the professional world. Yeah. Well, I think it's also too, it shows the maturity because I, I do think you step in and especially as a younger coach, you think we got to do it this way and it's got to be more of a hard line and it's got to be very disciplined and, and a little bit more rigid. And then all of a sudden you start seeing the bigger picture. And to your point, then it's like, okay, wait a second. There's a lot more to this. Let me change the way I'm going about it. And the results mm -hmm. still happen, but the yeah. process becomes a little different in the way you do it. Carry that forward into has the pandemic shifted or changed the way that you kind of look at things or especially around mental health has the pandemic had any sort of impact on kind of changing the dynamic of it absolutely <laughs> absolutely um when when it first started i saw a lot of just girls shutting down athletes would just shut down um a lot of it was due to they would they they would 
they would have, they'd be positive. And in the athletic department and with, with every school, you know, you quarantine all of that, but our trainer, we just talked about it at our banquet the other night. She said, I used to dread making that call about the ones for the contact tracing because they're, I mean, like I said at the beginning, they're all from out of town. I have two this year that are local and everyone is from out of town. They can't go home. They're living in an apartment with three other people and they have to stay in their room for, for days and days and days and days. And they just shut down, um, you know, not just physically, but mentally. And so when they started back, it was like, I think they had a greater appreciation for, for being able to be in person and practicing and seeing their family. Um, their dance family. Um, it was it was difficult because you know you obviously have to follow the guidelines and they miss. So we just you know we maneuvered through it and they um, they listened and they followed directions. We were very um, the cheer coach and I were very strict on you know what they could and could not do. A lot of us coaches all over the nation were in contact all the time about what kind of protocols we were going to have within our program to make sure they were staying, you know, conscious of what they're doing and healthy, but also at the same time, not, you know, in their, in their room the whole time. So when, cause we had to prepare for nationals, we went and we traveled in 21 and, you know, we made it through, <laughs> but um, I think overall, you know, they love online classes. <laughs> That's, which has made it a little bit easier now for when we're scheduling practices. I'm like, half of you all, all take online classes anyway, because they, um, you know, those incoming freshmen, that's all they had. So they went from high school, seeing people every day, all day long, and then to where their class is not on campus, online classes. They just come to practice, you know, whenever we could practice. Um, so I think that their appreciation for the sport and for their, for, for me, for their friends, just, they were so excited. And to me, that made every moment more special when we were able to have the whole team and, um, you know, be able to cap, you know, just, just really make those moments even more special when we were preparing for nationals. Um, I still think that, um, you know, they, a lot of athletes still kind of like the freedom of, you know, and they might sometimes feel like they can just do whatever they want. Sometimes you might find that, um, you know, but you, you do have to reel them back in and be like, okay, we're back to normal now. I know you could do this and I know you could have your freedom to go do whatever, but now we're back to normal. And these, we, you know, if you're, if you're auditioning for something like this and you are receiving a scholarship or you've signed our contract and you're part of our program, these are the guidelines we're going to follow again. And we have to stick to this, you know, or you just, you, you won't be successful in our program if you can't follow the rules. But um, I think, I think overall though, I think they had a better um, appreciation for it and realized what it's like to not have something like that. That was their life forever you know, and then um, for the sophomores, we used to call, we called them last year, the um, the Revets, because they're not a rookie. And then they're, they're not actually a vet, because they really had only been through a COVID year. So they were the Revets. <laughs> it's like, you're not quite a vet just yet, because you've not really gone through a full season of being on the field. You know, we were in the stands, um, which takes away from the game day atmosphere and everything that we did, you know, as a spirit squad, you know, you're with the fans, you're out there dancing, you're on the field, you're on the court, like four feet from people and not being able to do that and having it taken away. I tell you what, standing in the stands at a football game. I don't like that. I do not like that. As a coach, I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's such a different um, outlook on it. It makes you so appreciative of, you know, being able to do it again and, and make live life to its fullest and make it the best that we can, you know? Yeah. Well, it's just interesting to see it from your eyes too. I think that's a, a really fascinating. And, and like you said, even for what the students had gone through and are still going through in terms of the transitions, talk about community engagement, because 
you and the team very, very engaged in the community out even recently cheering the students on um, the, the K-12 students as they're taking tests. And so, you know, you're always out in the community. Talk about the, the philanthropic side of this, the community engagement side. Um, so we do, we just did, we just read to a school too um, and went and visited about the importance of being uh, confident and, you know, strong women in the community and going out in the world and just taking it on. Uh, we do a lot of stuff for Boys and Girls Club um, involved with that. We do, um, of course, we do things that a lot of the school, the university sponsors have, um, like Ashley Furniture. We did, there was a bed giveaway. And so we were there for that when they're delivering beds to people. And we do uh, say we do all the races. Um, you know, we we do birthday parties. That's, you know, that's one of the main things. They love us to be there. We just did a Red Cross, um, a Red Boa celebration for Red Cross. And, you know, you think, you know, I say, I, I just had to tally up all of our events. I was just curious as to how many um, we do and our mascots. And the mascots alone were at over 115 things, um, including, that was including games, but, and the dance team had, 29 other events besides all of the games that they have done and it is it's amazing that when you send out the message and you're like hey I need three people this 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 they're like I'm on it I want to do it I want to do it the the athletes love it they love to be in the community and you know represent us and represent the university so it you know like we said at the beginning they're never off <laughs> they're it's go 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 and I think that it also helps the athletes when we can do things like that, that they realize, you know, what they are doing for the community and how much they are appreciated, um, you know, by the university to be able to step up and, you know, and be there for these type of things. And when they need the, rep the university represented, whether it's a grand opening of something, whether it's, you know, um, Red Cross or, uh, St. Jude, um, even Le Bonner, we do lots of regional one. We do things all over the city. And I love, I love the more that we can do the better because it gets our face out there for them to really, for the community to see how much we do and um, just to pre appreciate us that much more. And plus the, the kids also get to, um, I say kids, the athletes get to communicate and get in front of strangers and, and talk and learn how to use that part of their communication because it's just going to help them when they go out in the world. You know, you got to be able to go up to the front lobby at the games and welcome all the fans coming in. And I, and I always tell them, make as many contacts as you can right now, because you're always going to remember them and they might have a job for you one day. You never know who you're going to meet. So um, doing all those things around the community helps with that too. Absolutely. And I love just the leadership and the experience. And like you said, if you can do all of that, then standing up to, you know, give a presentation on X, Y, Z in your business, that's a piece of cake. <laughs> you, you, you would think so, but then some of them are still so shy and, you know, but, but we, we talk about that when we have auditions, that's one of the things that, that, um, that I discuss, I say, you know, you know, you've got to be able to carry on a conversation. And the more you can do that, it's just going to help you in your classes. And then, you know, like you said, have a presentation at a job or whatever it might be. And an interview, especially, you know. Absolutely. Well, you're, you're, no doubt preparing our future leaders 100%, which is amazing, um, not only for what it means for our community, but the ripple effect for generations. And as you mentioned, it's so much more. The, the, the 15 national titles are nice, but it's so much more in terms of what you're doing as a program. So what's one more thing that you wish everyone knew when you talk about the life transformation, the leadership skills, everything that we're talking about, the program as a whole, what's one more thing that you wish everyone knew? And for me personally, I think you know, football, basketball, a lot of the sports get the limelight and the spotlight, but what you're doing is absolutely tremendous. And when you look at the impact, and like you said, on a national stage, the success you're having is absolutely phenomenal. I think that's a big part of raising the spotlight and the awareness for what you're doing. So what's one more thing that you wish everyone knew? Well, um, unlike other sports, we don't win games. 
And so sometimes, um, you know, it's misconstrued that we're not a sport because we don't win games, but that's, that's, you know, like I said, that's a small part of it. And I like, I want to continue people, um, doing what we're doing and just really pushing, um, the community and the university, um, in the city to see really what we do as athletes, because we're not only athletes, but you know, how much we, um, how much we care about the, the university and how much we want to, um, pour ourselves into it and be there for whenever, you know, whenever we're needed, um, to represent. And then, you know, being at games, that's our, that's our, that's the easiest way that we can come in contact with, with children, with, with donors, with alumni, with, with whatever it is, with businesses. And the more that they can get their, their face out there and meet and greet and really show them that side of the athlete side. Um, I love now. I also love the performing part because then they see, you know, really what we do behind the scenes practicing for that. And that's where like with social media, we, we post so many videos of the process um, when we get ready to go to nationals, we, the best videos come from the process of getting ready for it. And just, it's just two minutes. And that is our, that's the one time we get to do that. So during the season, when we're doing all this other stuff, I love for, you know, as a coach, I love for people to say, I saw that video. I saw what you did. You know, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate the girls, you know, they tend to ask a ask more questions. And over just the past few years, I feel that we're um, getting a little bit more um, exposure like that. And, you know, people are asking me, like, what do they do for scholarships? Do you get scholarships? You know, how often do you practice? You know, just little things like that, so they can understand that they are valued and people do notice it. So um, I just want to keep building on that with our program. Um, overall, with um, between cheer and dance, you know, we are a family and I want to keep, I just want to keep building on that and making them understand that it is more than just winning titles. And I think we've done a great job at that. I don't think that the community or the university expects us to do that. It's always nice, but, um, you know, we've, we've got to be, we've got to be good citizens and represent the university well when we go to all these different events overall. I'm just curious as a tennis player, tennis players are very superstitious. And so I'm just curious, are our cheerleaders and pop squad, like, are, are, are you all superstitious at all? I think individually they might be. Um, we're not really as a team. I mean, the time that we're the most superstitious is when we actually go to competition. And then as soon as you come off the bus to walk, it's, you know, don't split the pole you, and you have to walk the same way every single time they have to walk behind. Like we have make a line. It's those little things are, but I think individually they probably have more than, and I'm not going to say that I'm not because I, I back during the, um, from the game day and the championship football game and all of that, I wore the same sweater and pants and socks and hat. I'm like, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it each time. And if, if this happens at nationals, I'm wearing the same thing. So I tell them, I'm like, if I come out in the same thing tomorrow, <laughs> this is why. But, um, you know, overall, probably personally they do. But I don't really think about anything like that because, you know, if I've prepared them, um, that's what I strive for. If they're prepared, then we're relaxed and it's just put on a show. You know, it's how well I can get them prepared for it. Absolutely. Well, this is awesome. This is one of those that we could go on and on and on forever. Yeah, for sure. Wrap up with um, website, contact information. So where can everyone go to learn more? And when you talk about reaching out with questions, where can we go to reach out for questions as well? Okay. So if you have questions, uh, you can email me directly um, at C-A-L-L-O-Y-D-1 at memphis.edu. Um, our Instagram page is at Memphis Palm. And you can DM and send messages on there if anybody wants to know anything about it. And then our website on is on gotigersgo.com slash spirit. And that has um, all of our child information, some history information, things like that. But 
we're constantly on social media, you know, cause that is the, that is the way to everyone now. And um, we're posting videos all the time to keep people really engaged in what we do and, and because they're fascinated in it. And, and I love to, to keep everybody on their toes and keep them guessing and, you know, keep them excited too. Well, definitely congratulations on all the success and the success that's still coming this way. So yes. thank you, Carol, for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much.